covering music related content of all genres. If it filters through Eastern Texas, then you know we are all over it, baby. From Texarkana to the coast, Dallas down to Houston, and everything in between, we are ATX Rocks. Hello, hello there, music lovers. This is Haley McDaniel talking to you right here on the ETX Rock Show uh, for a very special episode of Haley's Country Tuesdays. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm bringing you guys a singer-songwriter out of Burleson, Texas, who um, is doing more than just writing good music. He's doing good things. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read you a little bit about Mr. Josh Vincent. Once upon a time... Josh was a police officer here in Texas for 18 years. He still supports all of his police brothers and sisters across the country, and some of his experiences come out in a few of his songs. He's personally felt the pain of loss and destruction, and um, he's been exposed to some of the worst situations imaginable. However, he has always been fortunate to find the silver lining. His songs are a testament of hope, love, compassion, and seeing the bigger picture of life. He's come to appreciate that we are all different and different isn't weird. It's what makes us who we are. Despite how we are different from each other, we all have one thing in common. We're all here trying to get by one day at a time and deal with the ever-changing lives we live. You can make great things happen with thoughts of anger, greed, lust, but nothing flourishes like the things you can make happen with the thoughts of love. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ETX Rock Show, Josh Vincent. How's it going, Josh? All right, good. Thank you. Well, the first, the first time I read uh, this bio, I was blown away because that pretty much sums up uh, everything that I love about country music. If you're singing about hope, love, compassion, and uh, seeing the bigger picture, I mean, that's country music right there. Wouldn't you agree? That's right. In a nutshell, I believe so. <laughs> or what we what we think country music should be, anyway. That's right. Well, you got a song that kind of talks about what we think should be country music, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. It's called "We Ain't Country." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. I love that song, actually. Um, cool. You've got a great EP out, man. I, I got to tell you, as badly as I want to dive into that right now, let's talk a little bit about your history. I want to. I want to hear more about your time at, um, serving your community as a police officer for 18 years. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot, did a lot. Um, <laughs> experienced a lot and uh went through a lot during that time um you know some people uh get into it to save the world and uh keep trying for their whole career and uh i learned early on i wasn't going to save the world so there wasn't any sense in trying trying to save the world and change but uh each new experience brings uh an opportunity for learning things and and uh if, if you can learn as you go then and apply it to your daily life and that's that's what we need to do and that's that's kind of what i did uh, 18 years worth applied to your daily life um i can only imagine what your eyes have been open to um both good and bad but sometimes the the scarier the situation or the more intense or um the more sorrowful even uh the more so that the veil is lifted from your eyes right. in, a, in a way. So as uh, from a songwriter's perspective, um, I can only imagine what that opened up for you uh, to be able to write music and to feel in a, a, a different way. Right. Yeah, it, it definitely did. It, it brought a lot to the table as far as that's concerned. Uh, the only area you just have to kind of, I just have to kind of be a little careful not to get too dark with it. <laughs> right. Well, you know, there's a time and place for that, though. You gotta, you gotta get some of that out, is what I've been told. I've, I've yet to reach in there for myself, but I'm sure it'd be nice and therapeutic, supposedly. After, yeah. <laughs> after I get it's it all out of, done. Right. I get it out a little bit uh, at a time when I can, but uh, yeah, I try not to get get too dark with it. <laughs> That's right. Well, um, okay. So did you serve in uh, Carrollton or actually you're from Carrollton and you live in Burleson. Burleson. So did, were you uh, on the force there or where did you, uh, where did you work? I actually, actually spent uh, 18 years or 16 years in the, at the city of Alvarado and a couple of years at the city of Joshua. Oh, okay. And retired from there as the captain, uh, the captain over there. So 
Well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and speak for all of uh, all of our listeners at ETX Rocks because I know they'll agree when I say thank you for your service and for for all the time that you put in protecting our communities. And that's uh, uh, not something you run across every day, especially. Well, I don't. You know, when I'm doing my interviews and all, I think you're probably the first retired police officer that that um, that I've been rocking out to uh, for the past <laughs> couple of weeks. <laughs> Well, I, I appreciate that, and I used to would have argued with you and told you I was just doing my job, but as of late, uh, I kind of I have a little more respect for uh, people that, that say thank you nowadays, so I appreciate that as well. Oh, well, that's definitely, it's, it's my pleasure to say, and it, it comes from the heart. Um, okay, so tell me, have you always been a songwriter has this has music been in your blood or is it something that's kind of progressed over time um you at, when you were a police officer were you writing and singing as well how did you first get into the music i did uh my dad and my stepdad both uh, were were staples in my life and both played the guitar and sang and uh <clears throat> so i'd always been drawn to the guitar and, and singing um, and I've always been drawn to a pad and a pen for some reason, but I never really put the two together until uh, later on in my career as a police officer. I wrote a couple of little songs for, you know, just for fun and played them for some friends of mine and, and they really liked them. And, and uh, later on in life, you know, you find yourself in a situation where you, where you got time to dedicate to uh, certain things that you didn't have before. And next thing you know, you're, you're a songwriter. So there you go. I love that. Goes. Uh, I, yes, that's exactly how it goes. I, that's, that sounds very familiar. Two totally different paths, but I, I also kind of dove into the songwriting world a little bit later, lived a little bit of life, which I think is probably a better thing to do as a songwriter to kind of have some, oh, sure. some have some life under your under your belt. But uh, absolutely. What kind, of, what kind of music would your uh, would your family play when you're growing up? What what do you always think of? Whenever you think back uh, when they're playing guitar and picking around the house, what song pops into your head? Um, well, <clears throat> there's two two things particular whenever I think about that. Um, Guy Clark was always a staple <laughs> in our house and, and Stephen Fromholtz as well. Uh, my dad would wake up in the middle of the night at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and my dad would be in the living room listening to Guy Clark or uh, Stephen Fromholtz on the old record player. So. <laughs> Uh, but Jimmy Buffett as well, um, you know, he, he he liked to play uh, a lot of Jimmy Buffett songs. So uh, I think, uh, you know, Margaritaville would probably be uh, the one I would go to uh, when I was growing up thinking about that kind of stuff. Hmm. I love it. So uh, Jimmy Buffett to Guy Clark. I mean, you've had uh, your childhood was full of really good music. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Clark until much later, so you're a lucky kid. That's awesome. So what? Right. Uh, what's your favorite Guy Clark uh, song? What's your favorite go-to for Guy Clark? Oh, it would have to be uh, <clears throat> "Standing on the Gone Side of Leaving." Mm, okay. Yeah, I love that one too. It's interesting. I usually um, any anytime anybody brings up Mr. Clark, I always ask what their favorite song is, and he's got such a collection. I swear, nobody's answered the same thing twice. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty. That's a pretty cool testament to what kind of songwriter he really was. Um, so many came to mind when you asked. I mean, he's got the whole album, the the Essentials album. I mean, yes. just about every one of those. So. <laughs> I'll sit here and talk about Guy Clark all day, but on my day, we'll have to talk about that later on Twitter, on the Twitter machine. Uh, right. Well, I, I'm I'm a fan too. I'm a big fan of Texas music. Have been all my life, so mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll I'll go right back with you. We'll go back and forth all day if you want to. Love it. <laughs> well, well uh, episode that part two of this episode is nothing but talking about Guy Guy Clark, and I promise you, Boston, uh, when you listen to this, we should make that happen because it probably have the most views out of the hundred episodes we put out. The one where we just sit here and talk about Guy Clark will be the the biggest. Uh, the biggest video on the on the whole podcast but that's anyway. awesome all right so <clears throat> what, an, uh, what an honor <laughs> okay so let's see Sion. let's talk about um your uh you've got a really cool thing happening right now um with a single that you have put out um it's called when the baby cries and uh, now has that single been released yet because i couldn't find it is that is that are you waiting until april we are waiting until April to release that. Uh, we're going to kick off Child Abuse a Month. Child, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Child mm -hmm. Abuse Prevention Month with that. 
and uh, we're going to have a big benefit at Fort David's Pub on April the 5th. Uh, Saints 11 will be headlining. Nice. Well, what an amazing, they got a great album, just came out today. I was listening to it right before I talked to you. It's, it's amazing, so I, I can't wait. It's going to be a great show. That this is an incredible. When I was reading through this and and uh, realized what you are doing um, with this song, when the baby cries, a hundred percent of the proceeds will be sent to the Children's Advocacy Centers of Texas in Austin to further programs for abused children and child abuse awareness. That's incredible. Yeah. Now, um, you know, without trying to dive in person. <clears throat> Uh, was it was it your time on the job as a police officer? Did you? I'm sure you probably were exposed to quite a bit when it comes to this subject. Is what what's the backstory? What's the passion behind um, behind this uh, charity event? Yeah, for about eight years or so, I was assigned to uh, crimes against children and worked mm -hmm. uh, child abuse cases. And mm -hmm. this is basically based on a couple of shaken baby cases that I have worked and. Uh, <sighs> Those types of cases. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Those types of cases tend to uh, leave quite an impact on you. So that's where that song came from. Oh, my goodness. I tell you what. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I'm at a loss for words right now. Um, Sorry about that. I'm a little no, emotional. Okay. <laughs> I, I, me too. Um, okay, so you know, guys, whenever you think about Texas country music, this this is what comes to my to my mind. What Josh is doing um, is is a perfect example in my in my head of what Texas country music is. Um, it's being honest. It's helping others. It's reaching out. It's community. It's uh, lifting each other up. It's taking the bad and, and turning it into something good and positive and loving. And um, this, this is an amazing, amazing thing you're doing. And I know that you're not looking for any kind of praise. I can tell that 100% that this is not about you and it's about the cause and, and, and what you want to accomplish. But man, I got to take my hat off to you. This is an incredible, incredible thing that you're doing with this song. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. It's been a uh... It's been a long journey, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, you know, that's one thing, too, about music. It can really turn things around. Um, and it can also, it can it can pull you right back to where you were, too. That's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, don't you think? That's right, yeah, true, for sure. But at least we have a journey ahead of us, and that's what we have to look forward to. And, that's right. Know, that's get right. up every day and uh, see what, what, what life has in store. That's right. Okay, so now when did you write the song? Is has has it been kind of floating around in your head for a while, or is did it come out pretty quickly? No, I was inspired by the uh, the Dallas officers uh, shooting over there whenever mm -hmm. that happened, and that was uh, that was pretty that was a pretty rough day. Uh, mm -hmm. Not to mention all the ones that had gone before that and after that, and and I don't know what kind of state the world's in right now, but. Uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that these guys out there are people too, and mm -hmm. they have real emotions and real feelings, just like everybody else does. And and uh, they they do and see things every day that most people don't even think about. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to get that out there. You know, I was inspired by that and uh, wrote the song, and I wanted to get it out there as quick as possible. So. And April happens to be, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, what is the actual? Child, yeah, Child Abuse Prevention Month. Perfect. Okay. Uh, it's pretty pretty interesting. Me and you have a little bit in common. April is uh, also Autism Awareness Month. And uh, I noticed that. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot that we can do for our kids in the month of April. I think is a, a perfect opportunity to to help kick off the year the right way right. and um, if you got something going for that i would love to be a part of it uh, any, anything like that i'd love to be a part of thank you i'm i'm gonna take you up on that <laughs> you might okay. be thinking i wish i hadn't opened my mouth because <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna take you up on that mr josh that's for sure all I'm right sure. So, uh, tell everybody again where the uh the actual event is going to be held and you said it's april 5th and who's headlining again 
April 5th, uh, Saints 11 is headlining. we got a big lineup. You can check it out on my website or uh, my Facebook page. Um, it's going to be April 5th at, at Fort David's Pub. And uh, anybody that wants to come, uh, please come. It's uh, I think it's like $20 a ticket. But like I said, all the proceeds, um, you know, after all the bands and the venues are paid, uh, go to the from the benefit go to the child advocacy centers of texas and then 100 percent of the song proceeds goes to the child advocacy centers of texas that's incredible all right etx family it's time to gather the troops because we are going to help uh josh spread the word as far as we possibly can about this amazing event that he is has the heart to put out there to help children who need it desperately and um you know when somebody pours their heart into a song um, uh, for somebody else uh, with nothing else other than just wanting to to make some good out of the bad. I think that's something we can all stand behind. So, Josh, ETX Rocks will be behind you 100%. And if you'd like any extra coverage, maybe um, during that night, uh, I'm sure either Boston, myself, or both of us could come out to the event, do some interviews, and uh, have a special episode featuring um, your song and the benefit. What do you think about Man, that? that? would that would be amazing. Please, Let, please do. Let's do it. I'm a sign okay. right now. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's see here. Let's take a quick little commercial break because, guys, when we come back, I'm about to throw out some true blue southern rockin' Texas country music courtesy of Josh Vincent. Y'all stay tuned now. Hello, everybody. This is Rio Wallace, and I am inviting you all to come out to the store Everything That Blings whenever you get the chance, which should be very, very soon if you have not already stopped by. So yes, the discounts are still here. The fashion is still here. The exquisite jewelry, expertly priced. Uh, whatever word uh, my Spanish teacher tried to tell me. Uh, Anyway, so come on out. We are here from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday and open 10 to 6 every Saturday. So come on out and we will joyously craft you with an outfit that will be outstanding. Hello there, music lovers, and welcome back to the ETX Rock Show right here on uh, uh, Haley's Country Tuesdays featuring... Um, a phenomenal singer-songwriter right here in Texas, Mr. Josh Vincent. Are you still hanging in there with us, Josh? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, let's talk music. What do you think about that? All right. Sounds good to me. Okay. Tell everybody music. about your uh, new album that's in the works and uh, and the backstory and inspiration that's going to go into it. Yeah, we got <clears throat> well, it's coming out uh, pretty soon. Um, it's going to be a six-song EP, and some of it is going to be uh, – songs that we redid from the demo CD that I already put out back uh, in April of last year called Small Town Stuff. There's going to be like three songs on, on the new EP from the old demo CD that are redone uh, with <clears throat> using uh, different musicians and uh, uh, diff recorded at a different studio, uh, way better quality, uh, great music. Can't wait for it to come out. I'm so excited. Uh, I got to work with uh, some really great musicians on the on the album, Milo Deering played uh, uh, fiddle and uh, steel guitar nice. on uh, two or three of the songs. Uh, Clay Willis, who plays with Austin Alsop a lot, uh, he, he played on the album. Uh, just some really good musicians. I'm really excited about, about what's coming out. Uh, Always Be Me is just kind of the scratch of the surface. I wanted to get something out there that uh, nobody had heard before <clears throat> to kind of get away from the uh, same old songs that are that were on the uh, demo CD that will be, re some of them, like I said, will be remade on the new one. So I kind of wanted to do something different uh, to lead off with. And that's why, we, that's why I chose Always Be Me. That's such a great song. And it, it's a perfect representation, I feel like, for your sound and, and where it's going. And uh, it's funny that you say that you're redoing these songs on, uh, from um, from the original demo, because I loved it. I love that gritty, like, I mean, there. There is nobody else out there that sounds like you, Josh. So I'm sure you're probably going to keep that aspect of it, right? Hopefully. Please say you will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a little less crunchy, but yeah. uh, it's, it's still it's still going to be hard rocking. And, and uh, you know, uh, we didn't want to get too heavy with it because we still want to, you know, still want to draw in the good old country crowd. So 
Right. But we do like we do like to rock and roll if we can. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. I'm like, they're about to bust it out. Okay, so <laughs> I, I've got to be nosy. Can you give us any hints as to which songs made it on to the new album? Because now I'm scared. Now I want to hear. I want to hear all of them on the on the album because I loved it. <laughs> yeah, the new one. Uh, let's see. So much stuff now is uh, the the new title of the. Of so, that one, and it, it's going to be on there. So, uh, hold on, I got to stop you there. Um, original demo, the title was actually <laughs> uh, a four letter word, so you changed it to so much stuff. Right, well, yeah, well, okay, it's actually so, so much junk now is, is okay. what's going to be the title of it on the uh, on the new EP. So we redid that one, and that's one that Milo played on. It's really, it's really awesome. Nice. Um, we ain't country. Uh, we mentioned earlier. Yes. And uh, and uh, oh, the other one is um, two shots. Perfect. Good. So, I was having my fingers uh, crossed to hear if you guys were going to update those. Those are my three favorite on the on the original demo. So good deal. Cool. Yeah, we did, and then we did uh, threw in when the baby cries is going to be on there, and uh, also another song uh, for that I wrote for for my daughters. I have three daughters and a granddaughter. And I wrote them a song. It's included on the on the CD as well. It'll be on the CD too. And what's the title of that one? It's called "For My Girls." For my girls, oh, I cannot wait to hear this, man. It's I'm going to be in suspense waiting on um, on the uh, charity event song too. Um, any chance that you'll release a little bit earlier than April for those, or <laughs> is that wishful uh, thinking? <clears throat> I'm a, I might could hook you guys up with a with a. Uh, <laughs> early copy a little sneak peek <laughs> got hold it here from straight from the horse's mouth josh vinson he just he just said something we might get a little sneak peek so that's exciting um okay so do you always who, who do you like to write with or, or do you prefer to write alone what's your writing style when it comes to to crafting your songs i have been writing alone uh i wrote a, a couple of songs here recently with a friend of mine named jason gibson um, but I'm open to writing with anybody. I think, uh, and I heard Phil Hamilton say one time that, uh, it, you know, you, it's all good, but when you really collaborate with somebody, when everything starts to really come together. So I'm open for collaboration with anybody. So if anybody out there wants to write a song, I'll write. Uh, uh, well, it just so happens that I'd like to there, Josh, but I don't want to hog all your time. <laughs> we ought to let you awesome, know. I'm open. Oh, that's funny. Oh, I, sure. I, I completely, completely agree that the collaboration part aspect is a, uh, it's a little, it was a little strange for me at first because I always wrote alone and, um, I was really nervous about it. I don't know how you felt, felt when you first started collaborating, but, um, whenever you find those few people who can kind of even you out and, and, uh, bring out the best in you and vice versa, it's, it's kind of a magical thing yeah, to sit in a room and, yeah. and have it happen. It really is. I tell you, I haven't really got to collaborate with somebody like that. The Jason, the, the friend of mine that I've written with, he's been my friend since, man, I think we were four or five years old when, when we first started hanging out. So mm -hmm. uh, we were driving down to Houston a couple of weeks ago and, and I actually wrote a song in the car driving down there. So, but uh, something like <laughs> you're talking about would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, honestly, the, what you're talking about too is, is, is a good example of it. I, I don't think that there's any real uh, rhyme or reason behind a great song. You know what I mean? I think sometimes it happens one way and then another way driving to Houston, <laughs> you know, it's right, like, yeah. it, they all come about I, I differently. Think, I think when it, when it comes, it just comes no matter what you're at, where you're at or what you're doing. So that's right. Um, out of all of these songs on your new album, did any, any of them just flood right out of you and, you know, it was done in 20 minutes or, um, you, did you have any experiences like that with any of these or what, did you kind of take your time or what do you think? Well, I, I, I hate to, I hate to even say this because there's going to be some people out there that think I'm bragging, but I'm not really bragging. I just, <laughs> um, I, I tend to do that with songs, just sit down and write them. And it usually doesn't take very long for some reason. I don't know. It just, uh, whenever I sit down to write it, it, it just comes right out. So That's good. That is really I've been good. lucky in that aspect so far. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like you keep your heart and your mind open enough to where it's able to come out because you know, that's something that um, I know myself and quite a few of my friends, we talk about 
a lot, you know, it's uh, how do you unblock your emotions to be able to really tap into them when you need to. So uh, right, yeah. it's not bragging, it's a gift and you should be really thankful that that's, that that's possible because it's, it's not easy to do all the time. Uh, meditation. I, I do a lot of meditation and, and a lot of, uh, a lot of thinking. So I thought you sounded pretty Zen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you sounded pretty chill. That makes sense. Uh, all right. So do you have any favorites on this, uh, EP other than, well, I, I, it's probably going to be hard for you to choose between the one for your girls and, and the rest of them. But yeah, you know, you know they're all special to me, but, uh, I guess as far as the the, the sound goes, uh, you know, I kind of like always be me and and uh, we ain't country and two shots. Some of those are they're they're, they're hard to choose from, but uh, they're all really good songs. I, I like them all. Yeah, very good songs. I completely agree. That is really exciting. I can't wait for everything to come out. Uh, Milo Daring, he he can pretty much. Uh, play anything with a couple of strings on it, wouldn't you say? I mean, you can like throw Man. a shoestring at him and, and he'd make it sound awesome. <laughs> that, that guy's a wizard. I don't, I don't know where, <laughs> how he came up with all that, but yeah, he can do anything with, with it. like you said, with a couple of strings. <laughs> Got two strings on it, he can play it. <laughs> that's right. That is right. If for everybody that's listening, I'm sure most of you probably know Milo Deering is uh, Don Henley's longtime guitarist, toured with Don Henley. At you know, all around the world and has been with him for quite some time. And he's also, uh, I believe he lives in, in Dallas. Isn't that right, Josh? I think Yeah, somewhere knows. here in the Metroplex. I'm not real sure exactly where. That's right. Sometimes he'll pop up on a, um, on a, a record that's made here in, in Texas and, and surprise everybody with some awesomeness. But uh, it's pretty, pretty cool deal to have Milo Deering right here in, in the Metroplex to it is. jam out. Definitely. Definitely a gem that we can tap into with some of the studios around here for sure. So now, which studio are uh, did you uh, record at? Is it here uh, close to Fort Worth? Yeah, it's actually uh, Fort Worth Sound with uh, Bart Rose produced. Nice. And, uh, yeah, what an experience! I mean to tell you, it was a really good, good time, and uh, had a lot of fun making the record, and can't wait to do it again. Right? How long? About how long did it take uh, to to get it all completed? Uh, start to finish, it took about about four months, and, and we worked pretty hard on it, and nice. he had a pretty open schedule, so, you know, it just kind of depends on the time of year and schedule, but I was lucky to get it done pretty quick. No joke. I've heard he is awesome. I, I've been following along with some musicians who've been recently recording with him, and it, it seems like they that he is putting out some really quality, uh, unique work. You know, it's uh, he's helping to stay true to everybody's different sounds. You don't hear one thing and a different artist and and instantly think that you know he's just trying to meld everything together i mean he's really staying unique to to each person it seems like do you feel like that is true yeah, he's, right he's really able to uh, bring out you know uh your the inner melody that you're that you were looking for that you had in mind whenever you, you wrote the song you know he's really good at that he's, he's got a natural ability to do that and, nice. and there's a reason why he's you know one won the award that he's won and uh and all that he's a great producer and i i truly recommend him to anybody that that uh, is looking to do something like that very cool that's a good shout out there bart rose i'll be sure and uh, tag yeah. him in this so he can hear it um yeah so to get that bart when i come back now <laughs> I, still get the good, I still get the good old boy prices. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, uh, say it one more time. We can get you up to like 25% off of like a, right. <laughs> a studio studio session or something. <laughs> That's funny. But in all actuality, uh, Bart Rose, if you'd ever like to sponsor an episode of ETX Rocks, just uh, come come holler at us. We'll hook you up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Got to put that plug in there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> so Josh Vincent. Uh, what are you most excited about for 2017? If you uh, are there any big crazy uh, festivals this summer that you're gonna think about possibly performing at, or what what are you most excited about uh, for the upcoming year? I'm excited about just getting out there and, and promoting this EP, and and I'll play any festival that'll have me. I'll play anywhere mm -hmm. that'll anybody that'll listen. So <laughs> to get out there and promote this thing and and uh, get to get it going for the for the charity song is the main reason in april you know that mm -hmm. i even did all this so that's what we're <clears throat> that's what we're pushing for that is awesome is to get out there and really promote that and get that going and the more awareness that that i can get about 
myself and these other songs and the more awareness is going to bring you know for that in april so that's that's the main goal that is absolutely amazing i cannot wait to be there on that night to uh to see how much is going to come from your uh your dedication and your work i'm going to be right there sharing it all along the way just uh just get ready because me and boston are going to come invade april 5th awesome. can't wait <laughs> Glad to have y'all. <laughs> Good. All right, Josh. So let everybody know where they can find you um, online and on social media. You can go to my website at www.joshvincentmusic.com or I'm on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. All you got to do is search me. I'll pop up pretty much anywhere. <laughs> That's true. It, it, it happened to me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought I had uh, learned all I could learn about Josh Vincent, and then he popped up out of Google and scared me. But <laughs> yeah, actually- yeah, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Josh, thank you so much for coming on to the ETX Rock Show, and um, I look forward to following along, um, especially over the next few months, uh, gearing up for this amazing event that you're putting together, and uh, and and especially after that how uh how well you're going to be received for this album because i love the songs the original songs on the demo i can only imagine how awesome they're going to be uh with bart rose behind it so uh, oh yeah yeah big yeah big deal uh thank you it was it was truly an honor and and uh to be on the show and i really appreciate everything that you guys do for for everybody all of us and uh especially the uh, the ones of us that uh, aren't as well known as some of the other ones that are, are struggling, you know, a little bit harder. I appreciate all the, the time and dedication that you guys put into that. So thanks for having me. Well, thank you. It means a lot to me. Definitely. That's what we do. That's what our heart's here for. So I'm glad that that makes me feel really good, Josh. Thank you. Um, Anybody I- watching should be able to tell. So you're doing a good job. <laughs> thanks. Man, I gotta have you on every week. <laughs> I can't say Haley's Country Tuesdays. It's just gonna be Haley's Josh Vincent Tuesdays. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like it. Uh, all right, so I got one other thing to ask you. I'm gonna say, uh, don't forget, and you're gonna say ETX rocks. But first, I I want to introduce um, a lyric video that we're gonna put right here on the end of this episode of your new single, Always Be Me. So you guys stay tuned for that. You're going to love it. Make sure to request it to as many Texas country and uh, radio stations that you can. Uh, Let's spread Josh Vincent's name all over the Lone Star State and uh, get as many people involved with his uh, charity event that's happening April 5th as humanly possible. Right on. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we've been talking all kinds of stuff. We've been talking music. We've been talking, uh, uh, um, who knows? We've been talking all kinds of stuff. Songwriting, Guy Clark, and uh, everything in between. But uh, we're going to go back to this uh, song that he wrote specifically for Child Abuse Prevention Month happening in April. So, Josh, take it away and tell us some more backstory on uh, the charity. Yeah, the charity, uh, actually the Child uh, Advocacy Centers of Texas is in Austin, but they have satellite locations. Uh, there's over, I think there's 70 of them uh, across the state now, uh, local child advocacy centers. And what, what happens is when there's an abused child or a crime against a child where a child needs to talk to the several different sayings uh, that, that make up the investigation as far as the police, the social workers, the nurses at the hospital, all of that, <clears throat> instead of traumatizing that child over and over and over again, telling the same stories and asking the same questions, they bring the child to a child friendly location, which has, it's, it's basically looks like a child's playroom. Uh, they have murals on the walls and they have toys that the child can play with basically to make the child feel more comfortable and, and less traumatized yeah so <clears throat> that's what they do and then they also provide ongoing services for the child after the fact uh, even if the case is over they still have uh counselors that will work with the child and make sure that the that the child has every opportunity to get over what what the traumatic situation that's happened in their life yeah because it's not going to be just a um you know unfortunately <clears throat> for any age, you know, you go through something 
as uh, traumatic as being physically abused by somebody that is supposed to care for you um, at any age is hard. But as a child, um, you know, that that's that's just it's even that much more long lasting. So it can't just be a let's help the child for a couple of days and and hope that uh, everything works out. It's it's got to be an ongoing therapy, you know, uh, building that child back up type. I mean, it's got to take months. Uh, right, yeah. <laughs> Maybe even the rest of the child's life, you know, just right. depending on the situation. But, yeah, that's what they're there for is to continue those types of programs. And they, they also put on uh, educational programs for the staff, like the, invest the police officers and the, uh, investigators at the police department and the uh, social workers and stuff like that. So it's, it's a really good uh, good charity to funnel, funnel some funds into to improve that and and make it make it even let's let's have every county have one you know that's what we need yeah no joke where's i mean where's the closest one to uh to uh fort worth or dallas i mean fort worth, I mean, fort worth actually has one uh it may be a tarrant county like tarrant county child advocacy center mm -hmm. uh, but they do have one dallas has one most of the uh, counties in in the metroplex have them but there are some uh, that don't have them, but you know, they should. Yeah, they should, absolutely. Um, anything else that you can uh, want to add or, or need to add about about the uh, event or the actual charity? I guess that's about it. I think that's about it. It looks like you covered all the bases <laughs> for sure. Uh, what an amazing thing to do, Josh. I'm just really excited. I can't wait to spread the word. We are gonna get as many people packed into that place on April 5th as humanly possible. We're going to be squeezing together like some sardines and everybody's going to be happy about it because yeah, let's do it. <laughs> there won't be any any elbow room, but everybody's going to be smiling anyways because it's for a great cause and we need to pack out the place. So let's make it happen. Awesome. Um, it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watch or, or watching and listening to the ETX Rock Show with a special guest, Josh Vincent. Make sure that you check out his social media sites, his webpage, learn more about uh, the, uh, the charity event that he is putting on to help children from uh, horrible situations to have some sort of a light at the end of the tunnel. Guys, let's help this event be a huge success. Let's share it. Let's share the music. Make sure that you request Josh Vincent to Texas Country Radio for his new single, um, Always Be Me. And speaking of, how about we go over to the lyric video and uh, you can just listen for yourself as to why Josh Benson is such a great singer songwriter here in Texas. So thank you for being on the show, uh, Mr. Josh. And don't ever forget. ETX Rock. Time. I 
gave my best cause it's all I had And you tried to rob me blind Just cause I'm proud of who I am Don't mean I'm who I'm gonna be Cause things may change the way I feel But I'll always be me music-related content of all genres. If it filters through Eastern Texas, then you know we are all over it, baby. From Texarkana to the coast, Dallas down to Houston, and everything in between, we are E-T-X Rocks! <laughs>